good evening to all so this is our 32nd lecture of the course compressible flow and gas dynamics in the previous lecture we have started our discussion on the propagation of the waves and uh, the last equation which we have got was uh, del square del square by del t square of delta rho minus a infinity square del square by del x square of delta rho is equal to 0 where delta rho was our quantity rho minus rho infinity so rho infinity was undisturbed gas velocity and when we have introduced some perturbation because of that we have got say at certain location our localized velocity was rho so difference of rho minus rho infinity is delta rho and how this delta rho is actually propagating with time and space for a one dimensional flow situation we are trying to find out that by taking the help of continuity and the momentum equations so uh, once we have uh, substituted different approximations to continuity and momentum equations we obtained that this particular equation and this particular equation is nothing but the classical one dimensional wave equation now we will try to see the solution of this particular equation so usually usually the solution of this equation can be written as delta rho is equal to some function of x minus a infinity t plus some function arbitrary function g of x plus a infinity t so we are having some argument over here which is the combination of space and time so uh, this is i am considering that the solution of this equation delta rho is some arbitrary function of argument x minus a infinity t plus some arbitrary function g of x plus a infinity times t now what we can do we can uh, calculate del by del t of delta rho so that will be becoming equal to say uh, derivative of this function of x minus a infinity t with reference to x minus a infinity t derivative of this entire quantity multiplied with derivative with time of x minus a infinity t similarly i can write del by del of x minus a infinity t sorry x plus a infinity t of g of x plus a infinity t times del by del t of x plus a infinity t so from here if i see uh, I can get del by del t of delta rho as this will be becoming f dash f dash of x minus a infinity t and this del by del t will become minus of a infinity okay plus g dash times this will become plus of a infinity so from here I can say that del by del t of delta rho is equal to minus a infinity times f dash plus a infinity times g dash similarly if i have to calculate del square of delta rho by delta t square then this minus minus will become plus so it will be becoming a infinity square f double dash plus a infinity square g double dash so i have shown you the detailed derivative del by del t of delta rho now del square by del t square you can do for this entire quantity when you will be doing finally you will be getting a infinity square into f double dash plus a infinity square into g double dash okay similarly similarly <coughs> if i calculate del by del x of delta rho so that will be becoming f dash times del by del x of x minus a infinity t plus g dash times del by del x of x plus a infinity t so this will ultimately comes out as f dash plus g dash because del by del x of x will be unity 
okay so similarly del square delta rho by del x square will comes out to be f dash plus g double dash okay now this was my equation number 2 uh, equation number 10 so classical <coughs> say one dimensional wave equation if i substitute so what i have done i have considered that the solution of this equation is some arbitrary function of x minus a infinity t plus some arbitrary function g of x plus a infinity t okay so now i have uh, calculated the different terms of this equation so this is say one term equation number 11 and second term is say equation number 12 so now if i substitute 11 and 12 into equation number 10 then i will be getting a infinity square of f double dash plus a infinity square of g double dash and then uh, minus a infinity square of del rho by del x square so minus a infinity square of and this is the second term that is f double dash plus g double dash is equal to 0 so ultimately this functions are getting cancelled out so it means left hand side is being satisfied with the right hand side so ultimately i can say that this delta rho is equal to function of x minus a infinity t plus g of x plus a infinity t is nothing but the solution of this particular 1d wave equation okay so the way we have presented this as the solution likewise what we can do likewise if you recall uh, earlier we were having one equation <coughs> So, this was equation number 6 is nothing but the linearized form of continuity equation. Okay. And similarly, equation number 7 was nothing but the linearized form of momentum equation. So, the way I have <coughs> I have calculated the solution and I have expressed the solution for delta rho particularly particularly by using uh, this functional form f of x minus a infinity t plus g of x plus uh, a infinity t in the similar way I can also write solution of velocity delta v also ok. So, delta v also I can write some any other function f of x minus a infinity t uh, plus g of some function x plus a infinity t. <coughs> okay. So, similarly I can write the solution for delta v also. Okay. Now, uh, typically let us see first, let us uh, see first that uh, <coughs> in this solution which is delta rho equal to function of plus g of x plus a infinity t ok. So, it is important to note that f and g are nothing but some arbitrary functions ok. So, let us consider that for a typical situation for a typical situation g of x plus a infinity t is equal to 0. Okay, because these are arbitrary functions, so arbitrary one function can have value equal to 0. So, let us consider for a typical situation g of x plus a infinity t equal to 0. Okay. So, then I will be getting delta rho equal to function of x minus a infinity into t. Okay. Now, let us consider I have some known disturbance delta rho 1. Okay. What I am having? I have some known value of disturbance delta rho 1 and I want to see that how this disturbance delta rho 1 will be actually propagating. So, this is a known and a constant disturbance. Okay. So, if delta rho is f of x minus a infinity t and what I want to do, I want to just study only a fixed disturbance which is propagating in space and time. Okay, so, that is delta rho 1. So, what I can do? I can write delta rho 1 equal to f of x minus a infinity t and this delta rho 1 is nothing but equal to constant. Okay. So, what I am saying is 
<coughs> I want to just study the transfer or traversal with space and time of nothing but a fixed disturbance whose magnitude is delta rho 1. So, that is a constant magnitude. Okay. So, that for, <coughs> for that particular disturbance, my f of x minus a infinity t has to be constant. Now, f is some function and its argument is x minus a infinity t. So, this function will be constant to a unique value if its argument x minus a infinity t remains constant. Is this point clear? So, one function can be a constant value because function is depending upon x minus a infinity t. So, if x minus a infinity t remains fixed, then only this particular function will be remaining fixed. Okay. So, I can write x minus a infinity t is equal to constant. Now, x is nothing but my space coordinate and t is my time coordinate. So, if I calculate dx by dt, so dx by dt will be equal to minus a infinity over here. Okay. And right hand side, I have a constant that will be equal to 0. So, from here simply I am getting dx by dt is nothing but equal to minus of a infinity. Now, x is my space coordinate, t is my time coordinate and these x and t are corresponding to a disturbance of delta rho 1. Okay. And we are finding that dx by dt for a fixed disturbance of delta rho 1, dx by dt is becoming equal to minus a infinity. So, it means that my disturbance delta rho 1 over here is traveling with a constant velocity of a infinity. So, over here a infinity is nothing but the velocity of the fixed disturbance delta rho 1. It is important to relate mathematics with the physical understanding. Okay. <coughs> is this point clear? So, what I am saying is, if I fix the magnitude of the disturbance, that only this much disturbance, a constant quantity of disturbance I want to propagate in space and time, then its velocity becomes equal to a infinity. Okay. Sorry, this will be plus a infinity because I, I will be doing this dx by dt. So, derivative of entire equation with time. So, first term will become dx by d infinity, uh, dx by dt minus a infinity equal to derivative of constant will be 0. So, this minus will become plus. Okay. So, dx by dt over here is a infinity. So, it means that it means that if I have a disturbance of delta rho 1, that disturbance of delta rho 1 will be propagating with velocity a <coughs> infinity. Okay. That will be propagating with velocity a infinity. Similarly, if I take the other way, if I consider that my function of x minus a infinity t is equal to 0 and my delta rho is only equal to g of x plus a infinity t. Okay. And then if I consider that I want to propagate a, a fixed, uh, <coughs> fixed disturbance of delta rho 1 corresponding to that I will be getting dx by dt is equal to minus a infinity. Okay. Corresponding to this dx by dt, I will be getting minus a infinity. So, ultimately, whatever this solution I am presenting, this particular solution is applicable for what kind of disturbances? Weak disturbances. Okay. Because if you see when in the previous lecture, we have started from the continuity and momentum equations. From the continuity and momentum equations, initially we were getting non-linear set of equations. Then we have taken the approximation that delta rho and delta v are very, very small. So, it means our distur disturbances are weak. So, if our disturbances are weak, then we were neglecting the higher order terms and we were getting approximate equation. Uh, as the linear equations and from these approximate equations, we have got 1D wave equation. Okay. So, it means that 
this solution whatever we are calculating that fixed disturbance will travel with velocity either a infinity or minus a infinity this is applicable for v a uh, weak disturbances where our magnitude of delta rho and delta v are very very small okay because if these are finite then the terms which we made equal to zero that cannot be made equal to zero and our equations will be non linear okay so ultimately what we are doing this analysis this we are doing only for the only for the waves of weak strength and particularly our sound waves are nothing but comes under the category of weak waves so whatever the disturbances travels in case of sound waves these disturbances are nothing but the weak waves so particularly you can see for a sound wave for a sound wave i can say that if this is my time this is x and this is density then i can say that if i have a wave something like this okay in another case i can have a wave something like this so in both the cases say this is my delta rho one here here also this is my delta rho one so in one case this delta rho one will move towards the left side this will move towards the left side so in this case dt by dx will be nothing but equal to minus a dx by dt will be minus a infinity and dt by dx will be minus 1 by a infinity and over here it will be moving towards the right side and here dt by dx will be equal to 1 by a infinity so dx by dt over here i am taking opposite because time i am plotting along y axis and x i am plotting along x axis another interesting feature of the weak sound waves is that another interesting feature of the acoustic waves is that in case of acoustic waves all the portions of the wave travels with same velocity so it means this particular wave is having one tail one head here also it is having one head and one tail so as i told you that acoustic wave is a weak wave and the nature of the acoustic wave or sound wave is that the different components of the sound waves the different portions of the sound waves travels with the fixed velocity okay so it means tail also will be moving with same velocity and it head will also be moving with same velocity and all will be having the same slope over here okay so here a wave which is traveling with a positive velocity towards right i will be calling it as right running sound wave and a wave which is moving with negative velocity a infinity that i can call it as left running sound wave is this one clear so one we have right running sound wave and another we have nothing but the left running sound wave okay another interesting feature is that the way i have the way i have taken delta rho is some arbitrary functions as the solutions in the similar way delta v can also be taken as some function of x minus a infinity t plus some arbitrary function of g of x plus a infinity into t okay now what if i do now <coughs> if i once again consider that say g of x plus a infinity t is equal to 0 corresponding to that my delta v will be equal to function of x minus a infinity t t now if i calculate del of 
del v by del x that will be becoming del by del of x minus a infinity t of function of x minus a infinity t because f is a function of x minus a infinity t so first i have to differentiate it with the same quantity and then del by del x of x minus a infinity t so from here you will be getting that del by del x of delta v is nothing but equal to small f dash into 1 okay on the other hand if you differentiate del by del v with time then it will be becoming f dash times del by del t of del by del t of x minus a infinity t which will be equal to minus a infinity into f dash now the value of f dash from second equation this particular equation i can substitute back in the previous one and what i will be getting i will be getting that del by del x of delta v equal to minus 1 by a infinity into del delta v by delta t is this one clear so from here i have got that my <clears throat> del by del x of delta v equal to minus 1 by infinity del by del t of del okay now if you see from the previous lecture i have derived equation number 6 what is equation number 6 is nothing but the linearized form of continuity equation for a weak disturbance if i substitute back the value of del by del x of delta v in this equation what i will be getting my equation number 6 will become my equation number 6 will become del by del t of delta rho plus rho infinity into del by del x of delta v and del by del x of delta v over here is nothing but minus 1 by a infinity into del by del t of delta v equal to 0 ok so from here i can take del by del t outside common inside i will be having delta rho minus rho infinity by a infinity into delta v equal to 0 and ultimately from this we will be getting that delta v equal to a infinity by rho infinity into delta rho ok so solution of delta v know we have come to know what is our delta rho ok so if in a disturbance we are knowing the value of delta rho then for that known value of delta rho i can also calculate value of delta v so delta v will be related to a infinity and rho infinity where a infinity is our undisturbed uh, speed of sound in undisturbed fluid and rho infinity is density of the undisturbed fluid okay so if a disturbance magnitude is given in terms of perturbation in density then you can also calculate the commensurate uh, disturbance in the velocity okay similar way the third uh, parameter we have is pressure so our interest is also to calculate the value of delta p which is associated so you can see that delta p by delta rho which is nothing but can also be represented as del p by del rho and as the process over here is nothing but an isentropic process so i can say this at constant entropy this must be equal to a infinity square okay so from here my delta p uh, my delta rho is becoming delta rho is becoming delta p by a infinity square so now in this particular equation if i substitute back the value of delta rho then i will be getting delta v equal to a infinity by rho infinity into delta p by a infinity square and ultimately my delta v will be equal to <coughs> delta p by rho infinity into a infinity okay 
Is this point clear? <coughs> so, in all these things, what I have done? I have considered g of x plus a infinity t is equal to 0. So, which is nothing but applicable for a right running sound wave. So, if I have a left running sound wave, then all these quantities will come but be the negative sign because in place of a for a left running sound wave, I will be having minus a infinity. Velocity will be in the leftward direction. Okay. So, that is the reason I can generalize these quantities <coughs> and I can write down a more generalized equation where delta v can be plus minus of a infinity by rho infinity of delta rho and which can be plus minus delta p by rho infinity into a infinity. Okay. So, this is my more generic form. So, over here if I know the disturbance in either density, pressure or velocity in any <coughs> sound wave, then I can determine the corresponding quantities for other parameters. Okay. Is this point clear? Okay. So, now we have to know one important aspect that till now whatever analysis we have presented for the unsteady wave motion, this particular analysis is applicable for a weak disturbance, okay, like our sound wave. But ultimately, whenever we will be dealing with the compressible flow, then disturbances will not be all the times weak. Okay. So, we may have the presence of strong waves where delta rho, delta v and delta p are nothing but not very small but of finite quantity. So, if these are of finite quantity, then we will be finding that our continuity momentum and whatever the continuity and momentum equations we have deduced earlier, these will also be non-linear. Okay? This, these equations will not be linear, the way we have done for over here, the acoustic waves. Okay? So, ultimately, what we have to do, we have to consider the finite non-linear disturbances for our actual analysis. Okay. We have to consider our finite non-linear disturbances. So, let us try to make the differences between the non-linear and the linear disturbances, finite and the weaker ones. <coughs> so, first point is that, what was the first point? In case of non-linear waves, delta rho, delta v, sorry, in case of linear waves, delta rho, delta v and delta p were small. Over here, all these quantities will be of finite size. Okay. Second important point is, when we have considered these waves, then our governing equations, when we have considered that these values are small, then our governing equations were approximated with the linear form of equations. Okay. And here in this case, our equations will be, <coughs> governing equations will be non-linear. Here third important point was, uh, the entire wave was moving with constant velocity. Just now we have seen the analysis and we found that for the weak disturbances, entire wave moves with a constant velocity a infinity. But over here we will be finding that velocity of wave in different portions will be different. Okay. So, here velocities were same, here velocities will be different. Then, when our velocities are <coughs> same for all the portions, then shape of the wave remain fixed.
so here shape will not be changing okay but here as the tail peak and other portions are changing differently with time then here shape will be changing so ultimately we have to go for this detailed analysis okay another interesting point in previous case is that uh, just a nomenclature that if delta rho is greater than 0 for any acoustic wave then that is called as condensation and if delta rho is less than 0 then it is called as rarefaction so this is the uh, nomenclature which is used in the acoustic theory but acoustic theory we have studied over here just to make our analogy and uh, uh, make a strong concurrence with the quantities with the finite uh, waves which we will be actually uh, actually dealing in the compressible flow analysis okay so <coughs> uh, the important point is now these are the differences in between the in between the uh weak linear waves and the strong finite sized non linear waves okay so now ultimately what we have to do in our actual compressible flow situations we have to deal with the finite sized non linear disturbances okay so let's see how we can do that so ultimately we will be finding in case of finite sized wave what will be happening if this is my uh, say any parameter rho if this is density as function of x okay then i will be finding that say this is my wave okay so i am finding one location over here x1 where my density is less than the <laughs> density value is minimum and in this portion of the wave density is less than the free stream density and here at some other location x2 my density will be density is higher than the higher than the free stream density okay or undisturbed fluid density the same in the similar way the way we have variation of density i can also plot the variation of temperature with x how i can plot variation of temperature with x if i know the variation of density then the propagation of a finite sized wave even if wave is of finite size because we are not considering in our compressible flow analysis heat transfer okay so process is adiabatic at the same point of time other dissipative effects due to conduction and viscous dissipation etc are also neglected so it means ultimately the process of unsteady wave motion also will be isentropic okay so for isentropic process we know the relationship in between density pressures and temperatures for example p2 by p1 is nothing but equal to t2 by t1 power gamma by gamma minus 1 for isentropic flow and that is equal to nothing but rho 2 by rho 1 power gamma okay so ultimately we know the we know the relationship in between density temperature and pressure for for the isentropic flow situations okay and our compressible flow analysis is purely isentropic because we are not considering any inclusion of the heat over here unless or until we are going for the hypersonic flows till now we are dealing with the supersonic flows only okay so for the supersonic flows heat transfer we have not considered second important point is we have not considered any viscous dissipation and we have not considered the conduction effects okay so because the process is isentropic so if i know the variation of density i can plot the variation of temperature obviously temperature will also be having the similar nature only it will be having scaling of 1 by 
gamma minus 1 in between density and temperature. Okay, so it will be having a scaling of 1 by gamma minus 1, particularly for a calorically perfect gas. Okay. Similar way, if I know the density, sorry, if I know the temperature, then <coughs> speed of sound is what is speed of sound? Square root of gamma RT. So I can plot the variation of speed of sound also, which will be having the similar nature, which will be having similar nature with difference in magnitude. Okay. And finally, so pressure also I can plot. And finally, my important another important parameter is u as function of x. So what will happen to u? If you see, this is the portion of the wave up to this point where I don't have any variation in the property. Okay. And then I have a portion up to this point x1 where my variation is even up to this point where my variation is where my variation is in this portion density is less delta rho is less okay and in this portion after this point I have higher value of density. So, particularly I will be finding the portion where density is becoming lesser than the free stream density in that portion I will be having nothing but the negative velocity. Okay. And the portion where I am having density greater there I will be having positive velocity. Can you tell me why so? We have seen in case of a shock tube, when diaphragm was broken, okay, then <coughs> sorry, <coughs> shock wave was moving towards the right, okay, and behind the shock wave, fluid has also started traveling in the direction of the shock wave, okay. So the point is the reason where I am having positive density towards that side I will be having positive velocity and where I am having negative density uh, where I am, I am having less density than the free stream there I will be having because our mass motion to the fluid is introduced in the direction of the density change. Okay, Is this point clear? So that is why this is my variation of mass motion velocity. So this is local fluid velocity u. So, up to this point is it clear? Okay. Now, let us consider that this is our finite size. So, all these earlier whatever disturbances we presented, these were weak. Now, all the changes in density etc are nothing but finite size. So, due to their finite size, with time when these will be propagating, these will show the non-linear dependence. Okay. So, let us try to see for this one dimensional situation how I can actually write down my governing equations. Okay. So, typically our continuity equation is in Lagrangian form d rho by dt plus rho times do we have rho or without rho? Tell me. rho times divergence of v is equal to 0. Okay. Now, for thermodynamically, density I can take as function of pressure and entropy. Okay. So, from here I can write my d rho will be equal to del p by sorry del rho by del p at constant entropy into d p plus del rho by del s at constant pressure into d s. Okay. Now, even if my finite sized wave is there, that is also isentropic process. So, for that process, d s will be equal to 0. 
ओके एंड डेल पी बाय डेल रो फॉर आइसेंट्रॉपिक प्रोसेस इज नथिंग बट इक्वल टू ए सो फ्रॉम हेयर आई कैन राइट दैट माई डी रो विल बी इक्वल टू वन बाय ए स्क्वायर इंटू डी पी इज दिस पॉइंट क्लियर वन बाय ए स्क्वायर इंटू डी पी बिकॉज डेल पी बाय डेल रो एट कॉन्स्टेंट एंट्रोपी इज नथिंग बट इक्वल टू ए स्क्वायर ओके सो दैट वी हैव टेकन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर नाउ इफ आई डिफ्रेंशिएट दिस टर्म विद टाइम सो इफ आई टेक टोटल डेरिवेटिव डी बाय डी टी ओवर हेयर दैट इज इक्वल टू वन बाय ए स्क्वायर इंटू डी पी बाय डी ओके सो से दिस इज माई इक्वेशन नंबर वन दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो बेसिकली ओवर हेयर डी बाय डी टी एंड डी बाय डी टी बोथ आर दी सेम सो फॉर टोटल डेरिवेटिव आई एम यूजिंग द क्वांटिटी डी बाय डी टी ओवर ओके सो नाउ वट आई कैन डू इन इक्वेशन नंबर वन आई कैन रिप्लेस डी रो बाय डी टी विद वन बाय ए स्क्वायर ऑफ डी पी बाय डी टी ओके so i can write equation 1 implies 1 by a square into dp by dt plus rho times divergence of v vector equal to 0 okay now my ultimate aim is because when i have taken these disturbances over here these disturbances i have plotted only along a single dimension okay so i want to do my analysis first only for a one dimensional case okay so if i take a one dimensional case then ultimately what i will be finding i will be finding that 1 by a square and this dp by dt i can expand so it will be del p by del t plus v vector dot divergence of uh, v vector dot gradient of pressure okay now because i want to write this equation only for a one dimensional situation so for a one dimensional situation it will be vx times del p by del x plus this rho times del vx by del x equal to 0 okay is this point clear so now what i have done i have written this equation only for a one dimensional case okay now let's multiply this equation this particular equation i want to now multiply with a by rho so on both sides i will multiply with same quantity a by rho so let me do it what ultimately i will be getting 1 by rho a times okay so 1 a will be cancelling and i will be getting 1 by rho a times del p by del t plus vx into del p by del x plus a times of del vx by del x equal to 0 say this is my equation number 3 okay <coughs> this is equation number 3 now <coughs> i will also write the momentum equation so can you tell me what is momentum equation rho times dv vector by dt equal to gradient of p okay if we neglect the viscous dissipation and body forces okay so ultimately for one dimensional case if i write this equation then it will be becoming rho times del v by del t del vx by del t plus vx times of del vx by del x and this gradient of p when it comes to left hand side it will become plus del p by del x equal to 0 so this is coming from momentum equation and here i have made it 1d say this is my equation number 4 up to this point is it clear let's also divide throughout by rho so that process also let's do here only 
so here I will be getting 1 by rho also ok so I have divided this equation throughout by rho also point is clear now what I want to do I want to add these equations 3 and 4 so let me do 3 plus 4 so if I do 3 plus 4 you can see I have a quantity with Vx of del Vx by del X and A of del Vx by del X. So del Vx by del X I will take common, I will be getting Vx plus A. Vx plus A times of del Vx by del X. Then I have rho constant over here and rho 1 by rho A also as constant over here. So let me take out 1 by rho A as constant. So inside I will be getting uh, del P by del T plus now del V by del P by del X is here 1 del P by del X is here and here rho A I have taken outside so it will be beco becoming equal to Vx plus A times of del P by del X and plus we have one more term left with that is del Vx by del T. Okay. So ultimately what I am getting is del Vx by del T plus Vx plus A of del Vx by del X plus 1 by rho A times of del P by del T plus Vx plus A of del P by del X equal to 0. Say this is my equation number 5. Okay. <coughs> Another thing I can do is I can do 3 minus 4 also. Okay. So in place of plus I can do 3 minus 4 also. So if I do that I will be getting del Vx by del T plus Vx minus A into del Vx by del X this will be coming with minus sign. <coughs> minus of 1 by rho A into del P by del T Vx minus A del P by del X equal to 0. Say this is equation number 6. So first I have done 3 plus 4 then I have done 3 minus 4. Okay. <coughs> is this point clear? So ultimately, if you see, now your equations are actually non-linear because Vx is getting multiplied with del Vx by del X. Similarly, so every quantity Vx is getting multiplied with del P by del X. So nothing but all our equations are nothing but the nonlinear. Okay, so till now we have not introduced in these equations how to uh, we have not yet linearized these equations. Okay, so particularly when we perform the analysis of this type of systems, either we have to go for the solution of non-linear uh, partial differential equations, or we can take the help of other method which is popularly known as method of characteristics. Okay. 
So now our equations are non-linear. We want to solve the non-linear equations. To solve the non-linear equations, what we will do? We will take the help of method of characteristics. Okay. So basically what happens, method of characteristics in details, we will discuss somewhere in the later portions of our this particular course. But at the moment, I will introduce you to very brief concept of this method and then explain how this can be used for solution of our solution of our this type of non-linear equations. Okay. So what we will do, we know that u we know that our velocity vx is nothing but function of x comma t. So flow velocity at particular location and time it will be actually dependent okay so what i can do i can write that dvx will be equal to del vx by del x into dx plus del vx by del t into dt okay now <coughs> what i can do in my time and x plane, I can take arbitrarily any location. So, say this is any location arbitrary I have taken over here. Okay. So, what I am saying is that if from this location I move delta x in space and delta t in time. So, from this location, say if I go to some any other location for which the distance travelled in x direction is dx and time travelled in y direction is dt, then I can estimate what will be my change in dvx. Okay. Is this one clear? Now arbitrarily, if I am at this point, from this point I can go to this point, I can go to any other point over here, I can go to any other point. So I have a large number of opportunities around this where I can move through distance dx and time dt and then estimate this value of dvx. Okay. But say, despite of moving in any random, phase, uh, random fashion, if I specifically choose a particular direction. Okay. So, how I can choose that direction? At any point of time, if I have any disturbance, that particular disturbance will be having one thing is when disturbance is passing through a particular fluid medium it will induce the velocity to the fluid medium because earlier we are considering that we are having undisturbed fluid but when perturbation is passing it is inducing some localized velocity vx okay second important point is when our disturbances move so basically what is what is a disturbance? A disturbance is nothing but the combination of some mean molecular paths. Okay. A few molecules when collided and clubbed together to a single point, at that point we are getting nothing but a disturbance. Okay. So ultimately, the propagation of disturbance is also a function of mean molecular collisions. And mean molecular collisions are nothing but associated to the associated to the motion of sound waves in a particular fluid medium. Okay. So, ultimately I am having two things. One is Vx. Vx is the local fluid velocity and A is particularly the speed of sound. Okay. So, if you consider the case of a purely undisturbed fluid, then in case of a purely undisturbed fluid, whenever the disturbance will be traveling, that will be purely traveling with the speed of sound. But if you consider a situation that a sound wave is moving in positive right direction and your local fluid is also moving in that direction, then ultimately your wave will be propagating with velocity Vx plus A. Is this one clear? So ultimately what is happening? Wave is also moving, which is moving in terms of some mean molecular collisions. So, mean molecular collisions are represented by quantity A and at the same point of time our local fluid velocity is nothing but represented by Vx. So, I can typically say that, I can typically say that for a disturbance, 
dx by dt will be equal to vx plus a. Okay, and ultimately I can say that dx is equal to vx plus a times of dt. Okay, because motion of a disturbance is nothing but dependent on local fluid velocity and mean molecular collision so mean molecular collisions are represented by the local sound velocity in that particular medium okay so i am saying that if i particularly move in the direction of wave motion so direction of wave motion is vx plus a so if i particularly move in direction of v uh, wave motion then my dx and dt are actually nothing but the related parameters okay so now what i want to do arbitrarily i have selected a point over here on this point if i consider a direction and this particular direction is having slope 1 divided by vx plus a so this particular direction has nothing but become a direction in which my in which my disturbance is traveling on a xt plane is this point clear are you able to make sense what i am saying so what i am saying is that i have drawn a special direction over here such that this dx by dt is vx by a so that's why slope of this line is nothing but 1 divided by vx plus a over here so this particular direction having slope 1 by vx plus a on a xt plot is nothing but represents the direction along which our disturbance is actually traveling okay now let's substitute back this value of dx so previous equation is 6 say this is my equation number 7 and this is my equation number 8 so what i will do the value of dx i will substitute back into equation number 7 so from here <coughs> what i will get dvx equal to del vx by del x into vx plus a into dt plus del vx by del t into dt so from here you will get simply dvx is equal to del vx by del x of vx plus a plus del vx by del t and whole outside everything we will get dt say this is my equation number Nine. Okay. Now the way I have represented parameter velocity. So what I have done, I have considered that v x is nothing but function of x comma t. In a similar way, my parameter pressure can also be function of x comma t because pressure is also traveling with the wave. So pressure can also be represented as a function of x comma t. so i can write by making analogy now i will not form the complete solution by just making analogy with equation number 9 i can write dp equal to i can write dp equal to del p by del x vx plus a <coughs> plus del p by del t into dt say this is my equation number 10 is this point clear now what i will do this equation number 9 and 10 i will substitute back i will substitute back oh sorry this sign should be plus over here so this i made a mistake here this sign should be plus in equation number 6 okay now what i will do these quantities dvx and dp 
these two quantities equation number 9 and equation number 10 I will substitute in equation number 5. So can you see 5 equation? In equation 5 I have del V x by del t plus V x plus a into del V x by del x which is nothing but my equation number equation number 9. Okay. So what I can write? I can write dvx and this whole quantity is equation number 10. So I can write dvx plus dp by rho a and we have multiplication of dt also over here. Okay. equal to 0. So, ultimately I can say that dvx plus dp by rho a is equal to 0. Is this point clear? I can say dvx plus dp by rho a is equal to 0. Say this is my equation number 11. So now, my equation number 5, when I have substituted equation number 9 and equation number 10, equation 5 has become dvx plus dp by rho a is equal to 0. What is this equation? This is nothing but a ordinary differential equation. What was equation number 5? Equation number 5 was a partial differential equation, non-linear partial differential equation. Okay. And that 5 has become 11, which is nothing but an ordinary differential equation. But the conversion from 5 to 11 is dependent on equation number 9 and 10. And equation number 9 and 10 are applicable only for a specific only for a specific direction because what we have done? We have considered these two equations along the direction where our disturbance is actually traveling. Okay. So, it means that this particular direction over here is such that for which a partial differential equation is becoming nothing but a ordinary differential equation. So, this particular direction is called as characteristic direction. So, this direction over here is nothing but referred to as characteristic direction. And for this direction, our equation number 5, which was a partial differential equation, that has become nothing but an ordinary differential equation. So, equation 11 is called as nothing but the compatibility equation. And the characteristic of this compatibility equation is that it is applicable only along a particular line which we have drawn on the xt diagram. Is this point clear? Are you able to relate this? What I am saying? So, what I am saying is that on xt diagram I have a particular direction. Along this direction I am having my characteristics. Okay. So, <coughs> along this direction my partial differential equation has become nothing but an ordinary differential equation. That particular equation is called as competi uh, compatibility equation. So, on this special characteristic direction the equation which is applicable that is called as compatibility equation. So, if I solve that particular ordinary differential equation the solution of that particular ordinary differential equation will be applicable only along this line. Okay. I cannot deviate from this line. If I deviate from this line, then the solution of that particular equation will not be 
that particular equation will not be applicable because that is applicable only along a particular direction okay now similar to this similar to this i can also have a situation where my disturbance is actually traveling <coughs> both disturbance and speed of sound are traveling in the similar direction then my overall velocity will become nothing but vx minus a like in case of left running shock wave left running wave and right running wave we have at one place velocity a infinity at other place velocity minus a infinity similarly one velocity we can have one velocity we can have vx plus a and other local velocity i can also have vx minus a because when a disturbance we have seen from the normal shock tube relations when a diaphragm is ruptured shock wave is moving towards right so one disturbance is moving towards right and expansion waves are moving towards left so one disturbance is moving towards left so we can have relative motion between the we can have relative motion between the fluid and the disturbance for example in case of a shock wave because the fluid which is imparted mass motion that also moves behind the shock wave so both shock wave disturbance and uh, our fluid local fluid velocity both are moving in the same direction on the other hand for an expansion wave expansion wave is creating a disturbance and that is moving in direction opposite to that of the local fluid velocity okay so we may have different directions so now if i take the opposite direction vx minus a corresponding to that equation number 6 will become equation number 6 will become dvx minus dp by rho a equal to zero so equation number 6 will become equation number 12 okay now the situation where i have vx plus a that particular characteristic i call as nothing but the characteristic c plus so this is my c plus characteristic line okay likewise i can have one more line for which i will be having slope as nothing but 1 by vx minus a so that particular line i will be calling as c minus characteristic line okay because disturbance and between the disturbance and local flow there can be motion in same direction as well as in the opposite direction so i will be having over here two characteristics one characteristic i am calling as c plus characteristic and second characteristic i am calling as c minus characteristic so along c plus characteristic my equation dvx plus dp by rho a equal to 0 is applicable and along c minus characteristic my compatibility equation is dvx minus dp by rho a equal to 0 is this point clear so now particularly if i am interested in the characteristic directions then i need not to solve now equation number 5 and equation number 6 which are my partial differential equations so if particularly i am interested in characteristic directions i can directly solve the equation number 11 and 12 which are nothing but my ordinary differential equations okay so i will stop at this point and i will continue from this point in the next lecture so please thoroughly read this uh, uh, concept it is not mathematical it is having so much involvement with the physics okay so try to relate the, the physical aspects with the mathematical points over here okay so now we will meet tomorrow